Hi! In last videos we saw how to create a complete ambient music pattern on the Electron model cycles. Today we'll see how to do seamless pattern changes to be able to build a longer ambient set. If there is one thing I love in ambient music, it's slow transitions from one ambience to another. Unfortunately, as the model cycles is not really equipped with proper envelope controls, we'll need to use some tricks. For this explanation I have prepared two patterns, one and two, and on both of them I have set up an everlasting chord on the first track. If you don't know how to do that, you should probably watch the first video of the series here. In the current state we hear that if we simply switch from one pattern to another, the switch is quite brutal, so let's see what we can do to improve the situation. The first option, which works great if you don't need fast rhythmical elements playing during the transition, is simply to stop the playback, switch patterns, start the playback again, and have both sounds blend in the reverb. To give us more time for the transition though, we want to make sure that the reverb size is set to infinite on both patterns. And we also want to decrease the volume of the track on the second pattern. Let's play pattern 1 again. And now, thanks to the infinite reverb, I can simply stop the playback, switch over to pattern 2, start again the playback, and slowly increase the volume. Once I'm happy with the volume of the sound of the second pattern, I can completely get rid of the sound of the first pattern by decreasing a little bit the reverb size. The second option we have is closer to automation in the DAW, and while it's more tedious to set up, it's also more predictable and safer in general. Here we start again with two patterns, each containing a different everlasting chord. The difference with the previous case, though, is that the two everlasting chords are on different tracks, track 1 in pattern 1 and track 2 in pattern 2. I will now switch to pattern 2, and the aim basically will be to record a slow volume automation on both tracks to do kind of a crossfade. To do so, we'll enter live recording mode by pressing rec and play at the same time, and if you're in quantized live recording, as I am now, Make sure you switch to unquantized by keeping the rec button down and hit play again. If you don't do that, you will hear steps in the volume automation when you play it back. The pattern is also playing way too fast currently, so I will decrease the tempo to the minimum of 30. I'm now ready to record the automation. On track 1 I will start at a volume of 60 and end towards the end at 0. Alright, and on track 2 I will do exactly the opposite, so I will start at a volume of 0 and uh, build up towards 60 at the end of the pattern. The last step now is to set the chance of all these parameters locked to first, so that the automation plays out only when we switch patterns, and that's a bit tedious to do, actually. Alright, uh, that should be it, so let's try it out and see if both sounds blend in a nice way. So I came back to pattern 1 now, and I will switch to pattern 2. Right, it's almost a bit too slow for the transition, but you get the idea. If you're wondering which method to choose, let's do a quick recap. 
pros of the first method are that you can have both your starting and ending sounds on the same track so it will eat up less of the total track number we have on the model cycles. And also it's extremely easy to set up. Cons are that of course other elements you might have on other tracks will stop playing too during the transition, but you might fix that with delay for instance. And the other con is that it's never so safe to just stop the playback in the middle of a piece. For the second method, cons are that it's extremely tedious to set up, but pros are that it's more predictable. You might also wonder why not use the LFO for that kind of things, and the reason why I don't use an LFO for that is that first, given there is only one LFO per track on the model cycles, I feel like I want to use it in something more meaningful than volume automation. And second, LFOs are triggered only with node tricks and not with parameter locks, basically. And in our case, if a node trig is triggered, then the everlasting sound will stop, so it will just ruin our subtle transition. Although it's not so useful in the context of ambient music, I can't finish a video about pattern switching without mentioning the change parameter in the scale setup menu. As a reminder, you get to that menu by pressing funk and page at the same time, and changes the last parameter in the list. It simply controls the number of steps the current pattern will play before switching to the next. So this can prove useful in two cases, when you have a pattern longer than 16 steps and don't want it to change before the end, or if you have a very long pattern and don't want to wait until the end before switching, and also if you have some unusual scale length or polyrhythms and you want patterns to switch when all tracks come back in sync, basically. So for instance, here I can set it to 8 steps and we will see that I can now change to the second pattern and it changed now. One thing that can be confusing is that the change parameter is expressed in number of base tempo steps so if your scale multiplier is set to half, for instance, and you set your change to 8, then the pattern will change every multiple of 4 track steps here. This is the end of this video and of this series in general. I hope it inspired you to make more ambient music with your electron model cycles. As usual, if you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, stay healthy and make music.